we can understand the way we modulate the signals with a simple analogy. Try throwing a piece of paper. It won't go far. Now, tie it to a stone and throw it again. The second method is obviously more efficient than the first one. This is exactly how we do modulation. In place of a stone, modulation uses a high-frequency signal, known as a carrier signal. As we know, any signal has three basic properties, amplitude, frequency, and phase. In the modulation process, one of the properties of the carrier signal is varied in accordance with the message signal. For example, the frequency of the carrier signal is varied according to the amplitude of the message signal. This technique is known as frequency modulation. Please note that the frequency of a carrier signal is always high, which means the modulated signal is also of high frequency and energy. The value of the original signal can be easily retrieved from the frequency of the modulated signal. In the same way, we can also achieve amplitude modulation. Here, the amplitude of the carrier signal is varied based on the value of the message signal. The modulation techniques we have discussed so far have all been analog types. However, they are already obsolete. Analog modulation is susceptible to noise, which degrades the quality of signals. And moreover, in today's electronic instruments, all operations are carried out in digital form, where the digital signals are either a